Hello everyone, my name is Jaron Bracken. I'm a Senior Deployment Engineer with NCSI, and today I want to talk to you about Avanti Endpoint Manager Remote Control Pump. But before we get into what those are and why you want to use them, let's talk about how remote control worked previously. This is a scenario every EPM admin will be familiar with. Someone in the office needs help, we find their computer in the inventory, right click and choose remote control, and remote control is granted. But we live in a work from home era, which means we're gonna have many people who are out on the internet. If we wanna remote control these people who are off of our network, there is an extra step involved. We have to find their computer in the list and choose remote control via management gateway. When we do that, we're connected to the cloud services appliance and we have to input a username and password. Once we input that shared username and password, we can now remote control the endpoint. With remote control tunnels, we can install a service on any Windows or Linux internet facing server, or if you already have a CSA, there's no reason not to use that. There's our tunnel service. Now, when I find that I need to remote control a computer who's off site, I simply find it in the inventory, right click and choose remote control. When I do that, I'm connected and authenticated automatically through the tunnel and then connected to the computer. This reduces the number of steps involved, reduces the number of logins involved, and it presents me with a more modern remote control experience. Now, let's go in the console and see how you configure. All right, here we are in the console. Before we begin with the installation and configuration, I wanted to go over the ports that are going to be required. Using this image here, you can see we have port 44345 will need to be opened from the outside internet, internet into your um, remote control tunnel, or uh, in our case, the CSA. We also need bi-directional 44346 between the core server and the CSA, and then inbound only from anyone doing remote control tunnels, uh, 44344. We'll put a link in the description for this web page here. This is the uh, web page that describes how to install it. Also gives us the installation files. So here's the installation file link right there. I've already downloaded it, so we're good to go on that. Now that we have it downloaded, we need to get it up to the CSA. At this point, you can use whatever your favorite tool is, uh, WinSCP, FileZilla, um, anything that can do SCP or SFTP uh, to get those files up there. All right, have I got it all pre-configured, so I'm going to log in here. And uh, here's the root of the CSA appliance. I'm going to move into TMP here. And here are my uh, installation files, the tar. I'm just going to drag and drop. And there we go. That's it. The tar file is now over there. I can close this. Next, we need to SSH into the CSA. Uh, once again, use whatever tool you'd like. I like Putty here, so I'm going to load that and open. Accept any certificates, and then log in using the admin username and password. Okay, let's make this a little bigger. First thing I'm going to do is elevate the session, so sudo su. Once again, required to put in the password. I love this line here, with great power comes great responsibility. Spider-Man influenced Linux, I love it. Okay, uh, the first thing we need to do after that is we want to navigate to the TMP folder. Don't know Linux very well, apparently. All right, there's the TMP folder and just a quick LS and there are, uh, or there is my tar file. So now we're going to do tar space minus x v f and then the tunnel name so i just hit tab to have it complete i'll hit enter there and there we go we're extracted it created a new folder called centos 8 so i'm going to move into that folder and from here i'm just going to launch the uh whoops i'm going to launch the installation um shell so set up tunnel.sh all right, you can see it did some stuff. There are gonna be some errors, cannot remove, no such file or directory, those are okay. That's perfectly normal, failed to stop tunnel service. This is if you were to be you know, upgrading or uninstalling and then reinstalling. Um, ignore those, so um, that looks successful. We're going to now 
add this tunnel information to our console. So here on configure and then we're going to manage remote control tunnels. Tunnel name is CSA. IP address is 73.63.12.247. Internal IP address is 192.1.200. Obviously yours are going to be different and that's that's totally fine. Okay, cool. There we are. Um, the tunnel's now set up, but we're, we're not quite done yet. Um, we need to tell our agents to use this new remote control tunnel. So if I close out of that and I go into my configuration and go to client connectivity settings, I will find remote control tunnel. It's not been enabled yet, so I'm going to enable it. There is the CSA tunnel that I just created. I'm going to move it over to the right under selected items and hit save. All right, now how do we get these settings to apply to this computer? You can do a scheduled task. You can right click and schedule update to agent settings and then drag and drop all the computers on it. Um, you can also wait for them to do a vulnerability scan on their own. They'll also update during a vulner vulnerability scan. Or in this case, because I have the computer nearby, I can just go and run a vulnerability scan manually. So here I go. This is my test client going to open up Avanti Management and run a security scan and you should see right here towards the top new settings so there we are new updates are available and then it should pull down those new client connectivity settings and there we are you can see it right there we pulled down agent behaviors client connectivity behavior and we are we are done so I don't actually want this to finish going through so I'm just gonna minimize it. Okay, that's done. Now I'm going to slide back over to the console here and uh, there's my machine. It is off network. I cannot ping it. I'm going to prove to you though that I can get to it through remote control via management gateway by clicking on that. And as I uh, talked about in the uh, whiteboard talk, I do have to authenticate again because I'm authenticating now to the cloud services appliance. It's reaching out, finding that computer, and there we are. So we are in, remote control is working, everything's great. Now we have remote control tunnels enabled. I should be able to just right click and choose remote control. The same remote control will be the one I would choose if it was on site. And now it's the same one I choose if it's off site. I don't have to make that determination now. I simply click on remote control. Remote control launches and there we are, remote controlling my machine that is not on the same network as I am. So you can see the benefit of doing this. It removes a step in having to log in. It also removes um, having to determine whether or not you need to use remote control via management gateway or regular remote control. You just always choose the same option. All right, now to prove that it works on site as well, I'm going to move my computer into the same network as the core server. All right, there it is. I'm going to click on it and now you can see it's back on network. Right click, remote control. And there we are. Hopefully you can see now the value of adding a remote control tunnel to your environment. If this video has been helpful to you at all, please like it and subscribe to our channel. Again, this has been Jaron Bracken with NCSI. Have an awesome day.